Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is the 2nd of June and I have finished my first read for the month which was the Handmaid's Tale graphic novel. Um, the Handmaid's Tale is by Margaret Atwood and then the graphic novel has been adapted by Renee Nolt. Um, I was gifted this by my lovely friend Kat from Breeze and Reviews right at the start of the lockdown which was so so kind of her because I have wanted this for ages. Um, this as you can probably guess, is a graphic novel version of The Handmaid's Tale, which is one of my favourite books of all time. We're reading The Handmaid's Tale for my book club this month, What the Book Club Read. And originally I planned just to read this because I kind of thought it was going to be a bit like the illustrated Harry Potters, where you have the full text but with pictures as well. Um, and whilst this is absolutely beautiful, I'll try and find a picture from the start so that I don't show any accidental spoilers. Look, that's the very first image. Um, Whilst it's absolutely beautiful and I really love the art style, it's very much like an abridged version of the story and I feel like there were certain aspects that were skipped over completely and you don't get the depth that is in the full novel. Um, which obviously isn't the graphic novel's fault because it's a graphic novel. I don't have really any experience with graphic novels so I didn't really know what to expect going in. I've thoroughly enjoyed it, I've given it four stars, um, but it's not the same as reading the novel. Um, so I will also be reading the novel later in the month. I've added it into my TBR for a couple of weeks time, so you'll be seeing that then. But thank you very much, Kat. This is such a beautiful thing to own. I'm so happy to have it, and I'm very happy that I read it. It's still the 2nd of June, and I've just finished my first audiobook for the month, which was Catching Fire, which is book two in the Hunger Games trilogy. Um, I've just come out to do the food shop, so uh, I thought I would film in my car, so I've got a slightly different background. That bag, by the way, doesn't have rubbish in it. It's got clothes for the clothing bank although it's shut at the moment um, and I'm going to film this quickly because it's about 500 degrees in this car and I've just turned off the aircon so that you can hear me uh, so this is a reread for me I started with the Hunger Games on audiobook earlier in the year um, they're read by Titania Mansley who was the actress in Orphan Black and I've listened to a lot of really good audiobooks she's easily the best narrator I've ever listened to um, because she can do loads of different voices and she just brings it to life really well um, plus there's like music and stuff in this one it's just really good um, it's obviously the second book in the trilogy <clears throat> excuse me so I can't say much too much about it because spoilers uh, but it's it's always been a five star read for me Catching Fire has always been my favourite of the three um, although it's been quite a while since I've done a reread so we'll see what I make once I read the third one uh, but yeah I thoroughly enjoyed my reread of that um, I've got Mockingbird, Mockingjay, I think that's the title of the last one. I've got that clued up to go, but I think I'm going to listen to something else before I read that. Um, just have a little break, but yeah, thoroughly recommend it. Definitely five stars, and I'm starting to come around to the idea of, of reading the prequel, but we will see if I do. It's the 4th of June, and my next completed read for the month was The Mystery of Princess Louise by Lucinda Hawksley. Um, this was such a random pick. Um, I don't think anyone else on Booktube is talking about this book at all. So I watched the Netflix documentary Queen Victoria and Her Nine Children um, right at the start of lockdown and just found it really fascinating because we hear a lot about Queen Victoria but like less about her kids, apart from obviously um, her, her, her son there. Um, and when I was watching the documentary they were talking about all of the children in turn and when they were talking about Louise I just found her fascinating and there were several um, rumours about things that had happened to her um, and things that she'd done throughout her life that were kind of hushed up and covered up and I just thought she sounded really interesting so um, Lucinda Hawksley was one of the people that was talking in that documentary um, and so I went and found her book online and read it and I absolutely loved it. I've given it five stars. I just thought it was so well done. Um, one of the mysteries of Princess Louise is the fact that all of her papers are in the Royal Archives but that archive is sealed and she's the only one of Queen Victoria's children whose archive is sealed and it's that question of like well why would that be? What is it that, that they are hiding? Um, and what I really liked that the author did was she talked about all of the rumours surrounding Louise's life, um, including the rumour that she had given birth to an illegitimate son. Oh, speaking of the son, here comes the son. Um, yeah, that she'd given birth to an illegitimate child when she was in, I think, in her late teens, early 20s. Um, and she, the author looks at that in detail and looks at what was happening um, like documented things that were happening at the time um, like how Louise's dress sense suddenly changed and then changed back um, and 
yeah, she just looks at the evidence that is available, but she's very clear that there is no concrete proof of certain things that she's talking about. Um, I thought this was absolutely fascinating. It's really well paced. It looks at not just like Louise's life directly, but also all of the social change that was going on um, in England at the time, um, because she was born in the mid 1800s and then she died in 1930 something. So she, let me just check which year she was born. So she existed in a time of just absolute change. Um, 1848 she was born in. Um, so she literally went from a world where there were horse and carriages and then at the end of her life there were cars and planes um, and the radio. Uh, she was a massive supporter of um, the early suffragette movement. She was passionate about education for all children, not just boys. Um, she was also worked a lot with, with um, charities to help um, the less fortunate. She was just this really fascinating woman and she's one of those people that having read this book I would now love to meet like when people say who would you like go back in time to meet I would she would definitely be high up on my list of people because she was just she was ahead of her time um and I just think she would be a really fascinating person to have a conversation with so yeah I would really highly recommend this I realize it's a very niche thing like most people won't want to read a random historical biography but I thought it was beautifully done I'm gonna go and see what else um, Lucinda Hawksley has written, see who else she's written about. Um, and yeah, I would highly recommend this very random book. It's the 5th of June and I thought I'd try a different angle today. Still in my office because that's where I live now. But I have finished another book which is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Um, <laughs> I've mentioned a project that I've been working on for a while, a few times in videos over the last maybe year. Um, and I feel like this month it's going to be really obvious what it is I'm doing when you guys see what I'm reading. However, uh, this was a reread for me. I was very, very kindly sent this copy by Kerry Louise Reads, which is very nice. Thank you, Kerry. Um, I have several copies of Pride and Prejudice, but I put this one on my wish list because I wanted one that I could, like, read, if that makes sense. I've read Pride and Prejudice many, many times. Um, I've got some beautiful copies, but as you will know if you've watched any of my videos, I do like crack spines and stuff. So I needed a book, a copy that I could just like read without worrying about the spine. Um, in case you don't know, this is a this is the story of the Bennett sisters and in particular um, Mr. Darcy and the second daughter. And it just is one of those lovely stories and you probably know it. Um, and I love it. And I love the love story between Elizabeth and Mr. Bennett, no, Mr. Darcy. Mr. Bennett's her dad, that'd be weird. Um, I love the kind of like um, hate to love thing and it's just very witty and very clever. It reminds me a lot of, um, of Much Do About Nothing by William Shakespeare because it's got that very much like back and forth between the main, uh, the main two lovers. And yeah, it's just, it's kind of a commentary on society at the time and I very much enjoyed it. It was an easy reread for me because I read it a lot. Um, but that's book number four of the month. It's the 6th of June and as you can see I'm in my filming setup. I'm just filming for a couple of hours this morning. But it feels like it's not right to continue filming this vlog without addressing what's going on right now. Um, and so I just wanted to film this clip very briefly. Um, so the murder of George Floyd has caused a massive outcry, um, particularly in America, but across the world as well. And the, over the last sort of 10 days on social media, there's been a lot of um, discussion about racism, which needs to be had and is something that I support fully. Um, I have always considered myself to be an ally, not just to black people, but to anyone who has less privilege than me. And as a white, straight, cisgendered woman, that is a lot of people. Um, and one thing that I have learnt over the last couple of years is that my job as an ally is to shut my mouth. It is not about me. It is not about how I feel or what I think. Um, my job is to shut my mouth, to help make space at the table for other people and to amplify the voices of those who aren't being heard. Um, and so that is what I've been doing over the last week on social media. 
Um, I haven't been like posting my normal chit chat or my normal just, you know, book reviews and stuff. Um, it's been all about promoting the voices of black people and trying to help educate my fellow white people. Um, I also feel like it's really important to say that it is not the job of other people to educate you. We are living in 2020. Google. Use the internet, use Goodreads, don't ask other people to educate you because it is not their job to carry your ignorance. Um, so yes, it's scary to talk about it, but um, I saw an Instagram um, like image which said, you know, it's a privilege to learn about racism rather than experiencing it every day. And that just like hits the nail on the head, I think. Um, in the link in the description of this video will be links to other creators who are talking about this far better than I can. Um, I'll also link um, petitions that can still be signed at the time of like posting this video, um, places you can donate and ways that you can help. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been doing and that's what I will continue to do. Uh, is to donate where I can. Um, there are also a whole series of videos as I'm filming this, I think there's like four or five that I've seen, which I will also link to in the description, um, of videos where um, it's like an hour long um, and all of the AdSense is all about the Black Lives Matter movement and all of the AdSense from those videos is going straight to the Black Lives Matter movements, I believe, um, and other places that need donations right now. Um, so please go and watch those, cost you nothing, um, I've had those on repeat, although um, Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin pointed out that you need to, in order for the AdSense to count, you have to watch that video, then watch two, two to five other videos on YouTube, and then come back to that video, and then when you come back the second time that then counts again, so please do that, um, and just educate yourselves, read books, um, read articles, have difficult conversations with people, um, we should already be doing this and yeah it's something we should already be doing but have to have those difficult conversations with people pull people up when you see it and just do what you can to do better um, yeah I'm not very good at talking about this and I want to do better um, if you've watched my videos before, you know that I don't script, so I haven't scripted this at all. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what's been going on and what I've been doing and to ask you guys to do the same. Thanks. It's still the 6th of June and we have come to the next village from us because our favourite deli is doing um, collection, which is very exciting. Um, and they're giving people like 10 minute slots, so nobody else is allowed in the shop. You literally just go in, grab your food, which you've paid for over the phone, and and leave. Uh, so we're just doing that. The weather's atrocious, as you can see. Uh, but I have just finished finished my reread of Sweet Pea by Sweet Pea by C.J. Scuse, which I have done via audiobook. Which um, when I read it previously, I read it physically, and I saw the audiobook was unscribed. So I picked that up and read that this week, and just thoroughly enjoyed it. It's um, Bridget Jones meets American Psycho. Um, for those of you who aren't aware of it, I think I've talked about it a lot before on this channel because it was one of my favourite reads of last year. Um, it is not for the faint-hearted. I need to give content warnings for basically anything you can think of. Um, but yes, it's very graphic, it's very funny, it's completely inappropriate and I really enjoyed my reread of it. Um, yeah, so I've given it five stars and... I would highly recommend the audiobook. The audiobook narrator is really good at like getting across uh, Rhiannon's like sarcasm and sense of humour. So yeah, it's been a good read over the last couple of days. Hi guys, it's the eighth of June, and yesterday I finished the Southern Book Club. Sorry, let's say it again. The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. Um, this was very kindly gifted to me from Amy at Amy Myers. Thank you so much for sending this to me, Amy. I was really excited to read this. First of all, let's just talk about this cover. It's one of those covers that's really striking and really cool, even before you've read the book. But what I really like is once you've read the book, you understand the meaning behind the cover. And I need to do a video on book covers thing at some point, but I love it when book covers do that. And it just has 
that little extra meaning once you've read the book. So, um, yesterday was Sunday, which is why I didn't film this clip, because I just didn't feel like putting my face on camera. But also, this book has an element of what have I just read when you finish it? And I just needed a little bit of time to kind of collect my thoughts. I'm also gonna put this down because it's real heavy. So, um, the book is set in the late 80s and early 90s in the South. And as you might expect from the title, we are following a group of women who have a book club um, and they get together to kind of read quote unquote trashy, um, like thrillers and true crimes and things. And one day a neighbor attacks the main protagonist and she's rescued by the neighbor's nephew um, and things develop from there. Um, this is kind of Stepford Wives meets Stranger Things with a little bit of Buffy the Vampire Slayer in it and I loved it. I've given it four stars. I thought it was brilliant. It's my first Grady Hendrix book that I've read. It definitely won't be the last. I really want to try My Best Friend's Exorcism which I've also heard is great. Um, and it's just, it's it's weird and it's fun. It's like witty and it's dark. It's, it's definitely adult horror and some of it's really visceral. So just be aware of that going in. Also content warnings for suicide, including suicide of a child. So be aware of that as well. Um, and I couldn't quite work out if I was reading satire or not. Because it's right on that edge of like, it feels almost like satire, but isn't quite... Um, there's also some discussions of white privilege in there, which were very interesting, and yeah, I would recommend it if you can hor handle visceral bodily horror, um, and the content warnings are already given. So yeah, thank you for sending that to me. I romped through it in like two days. Um, it's definitely one that will bear a reread, and I feel like once, when I reread it a second time, I'll read it a lot slower. I was just trying to like devour it as fast as possible and I just, I couldn't stop turning the pages. Uh, so I thoroughly enjoyed that, so thank you, Amy. And I can't wait to read more from this author. It's still the 8th of June and I have just finished a reread of Much Ado About Nothing by William Shakespeare. I've got this glorious bind up, which is the complete works. Um, you will be seeing this quite a bit over the next couple of months. I've got a few of the plays on my TBR for certain reasons, which you'll be finding out about soon enough. Um, and I've kicked off with Much About Nothing because it's my favourite of the plays, so it was kind of cheating. It's one I've studied loads and read before, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm also gonna put this down because this is a beast. Um, so Much Ado About Nothing follows two pairs of lovers. We've got Claudio and Hero, and Beatrice and Benedict. And it's one of the comedies, and there's a lot of wordplay, and it's just about what happens when they all get together and it's it's very much enemies to lovers and it's about um it's it's almost fast but not quite um there's a lot of like miscommunication and i th think i said this in the wrap up clip for pride and prejudice but pride and prejudice and much do about nothing very much remind me of each other because you've got that very sharp wit between the two like the lead lovers and much do is the same as that so if you're looking for a shakespeare play to get into and you haven't studied one but or you haven't read one before i would really recommend much ado it's really easy to follow the language is not difficult and it's just really fun um i would also recommend if you're going to do that watching the emma thompson film um, because that's just such a great adaptation. It's so fun and dynamic and it really brings the text to life. It's the 12th of June and as you can tell, <laughs> it's Friday afternoon, but uh, yesterday I finished a reread of Macbeth by William Shakespeare, which is also in this beautiful bind up that I showed in the last clip, I think. I'm gonna put this down because it's really heavy. Um, yeah, this was a reread for me and it's one of the Shakespeare tragedies and of the tragedies I said in the previous clip that Much Do About Nothing is my favourite Shakespeare play which it is but of the tragedies Macbeth is my favourite. It's a very complex complicated like almost psychological thriller kind of play um, in which we follow Macbeth on his path to become king and the murders that he and his wife have to commit to get there. Um, yeah, it's dark, it's full of intrigue, it's twisty, um, it talks about religion um, and witchcraft and yeah, I just, I always enjoy it when I read it. Um, I would really recommend with any Shakespeare play, 
um, that you try and watch a stage ver either a stage version or a film adaptation. Um, yeah, so that's I think that's always the best way to consume plays because obviously they were made to be performed, written to be performed. But I really thoroughly enjoyed my reread of this and I gave it five out of five stars. It's the 15th of June and yesterday I finished two books. First of all, I finished The Death of Mrs. Westaway, Westaway by Ruth Ware, which I was body reading with my lovely friend Leanne from Literary Diversions. This follows um, a young woman, I think she's about 19, um, who, who's both, both of her parents, basically her mother was killed and she never knew her father and she's really struggling for money and she's working um, reading tarot cards on the pier at Brighton, in Brighton and then one day she gets a letter to say that her grandmother has died and her grandmother's left her something in her will. However, this girl's family have all died years ago, her grandparents, she knows that she knows of are dead um, and she thinks there's been a mix-up with her name. However, because she's so desperate, she decides to get on the train and go down to Cornwall, where this family are, and see what she can get from the will. And it basically goes from there. It's a very creepy, twisty kind of family drama. It's marketed as a thriller. I guess it is a thriller, but it's definitely more on the end of, like, family drama. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. I gave it four instead of five because I worked out quite fast who was at the bottom of everything um although I still enjoyed the ride it's very like I said it's very creepy it's very tense uh, particularly towards the end and I just thought it was really well done I think I've read most Ruth Ware books now um my favorite is still The Turn of the Key which I read last year and loved um but this was a really good one it was a nice fast read easy read and yeah would definitely recommend then the second book that I read was The Hammer's Tale uh, obviously by Margaret Atwood. Now the first book of the month that I read you would have seen was the graphic novel version and it just didn't, I really enjoyed it but it just didn't quite scratch the itch that I had to go back to my favourite book. So I picked up the full novel. Um, I have I think five or six editions of this book. I collect different editions and I really like this one with the, it's the TV cover. I don't usually like TV or film covers on books but there's just something about this I really like. I think it's because I love the TV show so much. Um, I won't talk about this too much because I've already talked about the um, story in the first clip from the start of the month but this was still five stars for me. I still get different things from it every time I read it and I would still highly recommend it although I put a content warning on it for rape, um, sexual assault and torture. So just be aware going in. It's quite tough. It, I think it's easy to read, but some of the topics covered are really tough. But still, five stars from me, and I still love it. Okay, so I said I think in my March wrap up that I would show you guys my home office set up, my working from home set up, and then I've completely forgotten to film these clips. And I need to film the first thing in the morning before I get all my paperwork out because data protection. Uh, so I thought I'd film now. So here is my little spare room slash office tour thing. Okay, so. This is not usually here, this is my desk which we've put up, which is also the table we use for Christmas. Um, usually it's just this, which is the fold-out bed, the bedside table, the trunk, and then the bits over here. Um, obviously I needed a desk to work at, so here we go. Um, this is my view, which is pretty nice, and I also have a window there, so it's a really nice light bright space. Um, there's the paint by numbers that I'm still working on and yes if you watch that vlog I still haven't got any further on it <laughs> but I will do by the end of the summer yeah so this is my setup for the day so that part of the books is to prop my phone up on for video calls of which there are lots um, laptop, glasses, my little desk calendar some tissues, my drink for the morning, snacks in the morning and that's the book that I'm reading right now um, our work server is not the best so I always have at least one book up here that I'm reading so I can do something constructive whilst I'm waiting and then this is the setup over here. Oh good, a pose there. I should have moved that. I think you guys have probably seen this from my bookshelf video, but I've got this candle on the go. Which smells like sweets. Which is just a nice little ritual first thing in the morning to light it and then blow it out in the afternoon. Those are the books I've read so far this month. And then various books and bits piled up here. So yeah, this is where I'm working. It's the 17th of June and I'm at the end of a very long work day, but I have just finished An Inspector Calls by J.B. Priestley. Uh, this is a play that lots of people in the UK 
study for GCSE. Um, I have done a reread and thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a morality play. It's set in, I should really know this, 19... It's set just before World War One, I, I think. And... I can't see it. It's set just before World War One, anyway, and it's a morality play. And we basically, it opens with a family who are having a family celebration, having a big meal because the daughter has just got engaged and they're all feeling very smug and very pleased with themselves. And then an inspector comes to the door uh, because a young woman has killed herself and he's come to speak to the family about it. And it kind of goes from there and everything kind of unravels with this family and they are not who they think they are. And yeah, it's really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a quick read. It's only three acts. Um, it goes really quickly. It's really well paced and the language is really easy to read. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Gave it five stars. It's the 18th of June. I am still in my office. Um, I'm at, again, I'm at the end of a very long work day, which is why I look like this. But I have just finished a reread of Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins, which I read via audiobook. Um, and it's narrated by Tatiana Mansley, who was the actress in Orphan Black. Um, and I've been reading, rereading the books um, via audio over the last few months. I think I read The Hunger Games in February. Um, and then I read Catching Fire last month. And then I've just read Mocking Jay this month. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Five stars. It's always my favourite of the three. It always has been. Um, I can't obviously say too much because it's the last in the original trilogy. Uh, but it's basically set in an alternative, I think it's America, um, where the population is split into districts and each year two children from each district are pitched against each other in a fight to the death. death. That's like the rough outline. Um, and we're following Katniss Everdeen, who is from one of the poorer districts, District 12. Um, and yeah, and this is book three. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. Would really recommend the audiobooks. They're really good. They're really high quality. They've got music and sound effects. Um, Tatiana Mans Mansley does an absolutely cracking job of doing different voices and yeah, really bringing it to life. Um, this book in particular, I think is my favourite because of all the political stuff. There's also, um, given the nature of the story, there's obviously lots of character deaths throughout the trilogy, but this one in particular has got one character death that gets me every time um and this was no exception so yeah i have thoroughly enjoyed my reread very successful it's 22nd of june it's a monday so i'm just about to go upstairs and start my work day gary's gone to get charlie so i thought i would take the time take advantage of that and film down here instead i've got a cat who's doing zoomies all over the place there he is uh so if you can hear him running around that's what that is but yesterday I finished The Deep by River Solomon. Now this I'd seen recommended by a few different people, but most recently for, uh, by Jesse from Bowties and Books, um, who put it into their, I think it was a recommendations video for people who were taking part in the um, 48 hour queer blackathon. Um, read, a, read along, readathon. Um, and I decided to take part, so I've picked up two books. For it. The other one is an audiobook, which you'll see in a couple of days because it won't take me very long to finish, but I'm about halfway through I think um, but this was the other one that I decided to pick up because Jesse made it sound just my kind of like atmospheric creepy slightly I want to say weird but like out there kind of thing so River Solomon is a non-binary black author and they have written this book so I think I'll just read you the back because trying to explain it and it's short so I don't, I don't want to like give spoilers so I'll read you the back Yeti holds the memories of her people, water-dwelling descendants of pregnant African slave women thrown overboard by ship owners who live idyllic lives in the deep. Their past, too traumatic to be remembered regularly, is forgotten by everyone, save one, the, the historian. This demanding role has been bestowed on Yetu. Yeti remembers for everyone, and the memories, painful and wonderful, traumatic and terrible and miraculous, are destroying her. And so she flees to the surface, escaping the memories, the expectations and the responsibilities and discovered a world, discovers a world her people left behind long ago. So this is very, it's beautiful and it's quite tough reading and obviously I'm white so I can't speak on the black experience. Um, but it is beautifully written. It's about memory it's about connection to your roots it's about 
being, knowing who you are, finding who you are. Um, it's about trauma. Um, and I thought it was wonderful. It's very short, it's 160 something pages, 168 pages. So it's really short. Um, it was a quick read. Well, it could have been a quick read. I could easily have read this in one go, but I deliberately split it into three three sittings so that I could like really take it in. Sorry, the cat's prowling around again. So I could really like take it in and concentrate on, on what was happening. Um, it's well paced and yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Gave it five out of five stars and would really recommend it. It's the 24th of June and it is hot which is why I've got all the windows open so you'll be able to hear all the noise outside. It's why I look melted. We're just going with it. Um, we're also at the end of a very long work day, but I have also finished a book today, which is Contested Will by, uh, who are you by? James Shapiro, <laughs> which is another very niche, very random book that I've read this month. I already read this with the lovely Harriet from Harriet Rosie Reads, um, following a random Twitter conversation that we had. So, I love Shakespeare, as you've seen from this video, I have read, reread a couple of the plays this month and I've got a few more to read over the summer. Um, and I was saying on Twitter that there is a theory or several theories around the authorship of the plays and the question of whether the man from Stratford actually wrote them or if he was a front for a collection of other people writing or one other solo person writing. There's a whole load of theories um, if you have a look on the internet, which I find really interesting. Um, and Harriet had never heard of this theory before. I studied it very briefly at college and again at uni. Um, and so she had a little look, found this book, asked me if I wanted to buddy read, and I said yes, because I find it really interesting. So this is non-fiction. Um, James Shapiro is a Shakespearean expert who believes that the man from Stratford wrote all the plays and the sonnets. Um, and this is basically him exploring the various theories um, the various candidates that other people have put forward for the authorship of the plays and sort of the history of um, Shakespearean uh, conspiracy theories, I suppose. And I found it really interesting. It is quite dense. It's quite academic. Um, I have got a good knowledge of the plays. I have read all the plays and the sonnets previously. And this assumes that you know the plays. So I would say going into this, it does assume a certain level of... Um, knowledge uh so it's not gonna be for everybody it's not it's not the easiest thing to read it's quite dense and also like the there's a lot of words on each page like the text is small um so harry and i broke it down we've been reading it in like 30 chunks per day i've really enjoyed chatting with her and having a bit of a nerd out because she's a linguistics graduate i'm a literature graduate and so those two things go together really well especially when you're talking about shakespearean um, conspiracy theories and yeah I've had a thoroughly good time if you are into Shakespeare I would really recommend this I know that Olivia from Olivia Catastrophe is hosting a Shakespeare themed readathon next month which I just think is brilliant and um, she's co-hosting it with a couple of other people um, if you're taking part in that this might fit for the non-fiction um, prompt but only if you've already got a good prior knowledge of the plays it's the 26th of June and I look like an egg because it's so hot. I've had to put my hair like all the way up. Um, today I have finished reading A Taste of Honey, which is a play by Sheila Delaney, which was published in 1958. It's a, I think they call it like a kitchen sink drama. It's for the project that I keep mentioning. And I didn't love it. I sort of, I'm not sure I've understood the point of it which is a bit of a problem for reasons that will become apparent very shortly. Um, it's mostly a conversation between a mother and her daughter, who's about 18, 19, and it's set, I think, in Manchester. Um, the mother is a sex worker and the daughter um, gets pregnant by a black sailor, and it's a conversation mostly between them and then there's a couple of other men that sort of come in and out um, during the play. And yeah, I'm not sure I caught the meaning. There's also some really problematic language in here. Um, it was written, like I said, in 1958, and some of the words used for black people, people of colour, um, and also talking about sexuality is really not okay <laughs> for a modern audience. So yeah, I'm slightly bemused by this one. Um, not my favourite, and I think I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. It's the 27th of June, it's Saturday, just having a chill day at home with my boys. 
um, we were due to go for our first like non-essential trip out of the house since the start of lockdown in March. Uh, we were going to go, there's a lake that's not far from here. So we're going to go there for a walk and a picnic, but it's chucking it down today. So we called it off and we've had a film morning instead and then an indoor picnic in our lounge. It's been really nice. It's been a good day. Um, but I've just had a knock at the door. I've had an Amazon parcel and I've not ordered anything, I don't think. So I thought I would open it on camera just in case it's a gift from one of you guys. Oh, not quite. Oh, there we go. Let's do this the same way Mary does it and look for the gift. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> it's from Simone. From me, Simone and I. Here's a little gift for you. Thank, thank you for always being there. Lots of love, Simone. You don't have to send me books, Simone, but I'm very excited. Oh, just see what it is. I'm really excited for this. Plus, there's a readathon this is going to be perfect for in July. She sent me Daisy Jones and the Six. Um, by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I'm probably the last person on booktube to, that hasn't read this book. I am so excited for this because I absolutely adored The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo which I read last year and I think this is based on a band. Yeah it's all done in like transcripts and I'm really excited to read this. Thank you Simone. That has made my day and I will definitely be reading that in July. It's the 29th of June, which means that tomorrow is mine and Gary's second wedding anniversary. And I look like this because I've just been to the shops and I was the only person wearing a mask, which is very confusing and frustrating. So here's a little PSA. Um, if you're going out at the moment, please wear a mask. It's to protect the people around you and potentially you as well. Um, so yeah, wear a mask. There's, there's a pandemic happening. Anyway didn't come on here to lecture people about wearing masks. Uh, I finished a book yesterday which was A Heart So Fierce and Broken by Bridget Kemmerer. I buddy read this with my wonderful friend Charlotte from Books and Bargains. It was actually our first buddy read and I can't believe it's taken us this long to buddy read. Um, first of all, I loved reading with Charlotte. It was really fun and we it was really good to like bounce ideas and conspiracy theories off each other and yeah it's just it's just been really really enjoyable so thank you charlotte for reading with me i had a really good time um second of all how glorious is this cover and the spine i can't wait to put this one on the shelf next to its sister so this is the second book i think it's the curse breakers trilogy i can't remember the first one is the curse to dark and lonely which i read i want to say in april with cat from reason reviews which was also really fun and Charlotte sent me this to celebrate uh, this channel reaching a thousand subscribers and then she asked me if I'd want to buddy read with her because she just read A Curse So Dark and Lonely. So we did. Um, I can't say loads about this because obviously it's a sequel. Um, what I will say is it goes in quite a different direction than A Curse So Dark and Lonely. I wouldn't even necessarily say it's a sequel. It's not really a companion novel either because it takes place after the events of the first book but you don't get the same points of view as you do in the first book. And we also meet a new character who I loved. Um, yeah, this, I, like I said, I can't really say much. It's a fantasy YA. Uh, the first one's a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. This goes very much off on its own, does its own thing. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm gonna give it four stars. The only reason it's not had five is because I didn't, love the way that the ending was handled and I, I, it's really difficult to talk about without giving spoilers which I don't want to do so I think the ending was great but I feel like the way it came about was kind of annoying and that's really vague I know but I can't say any more than that however I still absolutely loved it I am gutted that we have to wait until January for the third book the title of which I can't remember a vowel so something and something I don't know but I'm very excited for that and who knew I'd get so excited about a YA fantasy series it's the 30th of June, so it's mine and Gary's second wedding anniversary. We're having just a really lovely day at home. Um, it wasn't quite the anniversary we had planned because we had booked to go to Wales for the week, but obviously that hasn't happened. Uh, but yeah, we're just having a lovely day at home with some champagne and a wedding film film and all that kind of stuff. Um, I have also finished my final read for the month, which is The Museum of Extraordinary Things by Alice Hoffman. Um, 
this was gifted to me by my lovely friend Charlotte, she's a non-booktube friend, um, so she doesn't have a channel. I will link her Instagram in the stories though, because she, in the stories? In the description, because she has a online business um, selling candles and melts and all kinds of really lovely things, so I'll put a link there in case you're interested. But she sent me this, which is very sweet of her, thank you Charlotte. So this is an odd little book, it's set in New York in 1911. And it's historical fiction, but I would say it's like historical literary fiction. Um, and we've got two perspectives. We've got Coralie, who uh, grows up in the Museum of Extraordinary Things. Her father is a magician slash scientist. He runs the museum and he collects sort of oddities, human oddities and alive like people, but also dead things that are odd and she grows up in his museum and he basically trains her to be a mermaid um, and to hold her breath underwater for long periods of time. Then we've also got Eddie who is a young, I think he's Polish, yeah, Polish um, Jewish boy who has to flee his homeland with his father and it's about him growing up in New York and coming to terms with his identity. And for most of the book their two stories run in parallel and then there is a point where they cross and it's just about that really. It's very slow, it's very character driven which uh, Alice Hoffman's works usually are. I've also read Practical Magic and The Rules of Magic. The Rules of Magic? Yes. Um, which was one of my favourite books of last year. And her writing is always beautiful and slow and character driven. I've given this four out of five stars and parts of this book were absolutely stunning. But then also because it kept switching back and forth between the narratives. So like something would finally start happening with say Coralie and then we would switch over to Eddie and I'd be like, no, but I want to find out what happened over here. Um, it does have the instant love trope, so be aware of that. I also need to put on content warnings for domestic violence, sexual assault, um, what else? Attempted rape um, and animal cruelty as well, just be aware of that because there is quite a lot of discussion about how circuses were run in the early 1900s. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful piece of writing. There's not much plot, but I still really enjoyed it. And those are all the books that I read in the month of June. So let's do some stats and I'll tell you my book of the month and then that's it for this video. So I read 17 books, which totaled 4,797 pages, averaged out 160 per day. So it's a bit lower than last month, but it's still pretty good. Um, I, my average star rating was five, uh, 4.52 and I gave five stars, uh, sorry, I gave 10 five stars out of those 17 books. So in terms of like quality and stuff, this month has been really good. Although a lot of those five stars were rereads. So things like The Handmaid's Tale um, and The Shakespeare Plays. Um, yeah, June has been kind of a wild month. Uh, there's been a lot going on. There's been a lot of learning happening. Um, and... It feels like it's gone really quickly. I can't believe it's the end of June already. Yesterday, this, today when I'm filming this is the 1st of July and yesterday was our second wedding anniversary as I've said in my previous clip and I just cannot believe that we're halfway through the year already. In my head it kind of feels like it's still February, which I think is just a side effect of pandemic. Uh, my book of the month, uh, there was really only one book that I could choose for this month because I found this book beautiful and impactful and I want to read everything this author has ever written um, and that is The Deep by River Solomon um, which you'll have seen a few clips back. I just really really recommend this one. I thought it was beautiful like I said and I just I just want to pick up everything that this author writes from now until the end of time. So yeah that is my book of the month. I hope you've enjoyed this wrap up. Um, please drop me a comment below let me know what your favourite read was in the month of June and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks all!